Hi, everybody. Pastor Andrew Abbott here with a, another short episode of Winsome Witnessing Material. And I'm just trying to distill into a shorter form the presentations that Gary Gibbs has presented. So bear with me and let me know if you like this. First of all, chapters one and two of Winsome Witnessing in the book is the subject of his first video that he broadcasted uh, first off. And if you look at what he's presenting here, in a nutshell, you could say, that he wants his viewers to understand that winsomely sharing the gospel with somebody has everything to do not only with the correct content, but with the manner in which it was shared. As Adventists, we have distinctive beliefs that we want to share with the world and broadcast out there distinctive truths from Scripture, such as the mark of the beast, um, Daniel 7, uh, Hellfire, um, State of the Dead, and all these other teachings which are from the scriptures and form an important part of our faith. But at the same time, if we broadcast that out, the right content, without, any attend without attending, I should say, to how it's presented, we run the risk of uh, disillusioning a lot of people and turning away a lot of people. Because these truths, even though they're true, can come across as very abrasive if you don't have that rapport built. To show his point, he references Acts chapter 16, where Paul and Silas are in Philippi, and they're approached by a slave girl who is earning money for her masters by fortune-telling and is demon-possessed. So she comes behind the apostles and begins harassing them by yelling out, these men are servants of the Most High God who have come to give us salvation. And she repeats this over and over. And technically, this is the key point, that statement is true. Because that's why they were there, right? But the manner in which she was sharing that truth was not winsome. She was harassing. She was uh, calling attention to her reputation as uh, a slave girl who was involved in dark arts and Satan's realm, basically, in the community there. Um, she was also uh, tarnishing the reputation of the, of the apostles. And there's a lot of other things we can mention, too. But that's the point. The content was technically correct, but the manner was incorrect. It was not winsome. And that's where we come to the personal connection. It's about friendships. That's why we call this friendship evangelism. It's not a matter of just broadcasting um, biblical teachings and hoping that our widely cast net uh, catches a few people. It's about let's focus in on connecting with people genuinely as friends, not in the sense that we're trying to just um, pad our numbers at church or anything like that. It's about I genuinely want to see this person in God's kingdom because there is a hell to shun, friends. That is something that we would hate very much to see any of our friends or acquaintances or anyone suffer eternal destruction because they didn't have the chance to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And here's the thing. Even though personal connections where it's at, that's also where it is hard for people because they see it as daunting to share their faith. They have in their mind that awkward experience of um, sharing this the gospel with somebody and someone comes back with a question that they don't know how to answer, someone shuts the door in their face, someone ridicules them, there's all these different scenarios that are running through their mind and it scares them stiff and they're just wondering, how can I do this? Well, that's where the gospel commission comes in, friends, because we can't do this in our own power. I'm just telling you, if we want to see fruit from our work in sharing the gospel with others, we have to rely on God. And he doesn't tell us to get several degrees in gospel sharing and figure out every little um, detail of what we're going to do ahead of time. He says, just go. Just go. And in experiencing gospel sharing, you'll learn how to do it. That is the best teacher is going out and getting experience. And he'll bless us along the way as well. He'll empower us. Um, take the example of Bob, who on the job 
influenced many of his co-workers through his changed life as a new disciple in Jesus. And he started Bible studies. Once people began asking, he shared the truth. I am changed through Jesus. He started studying with them and he only had one Bible studies worth of information more than what his co-workers had. He was only one Bible study ahead of them, in other words, as he was studying with each of his co-workers because he was in Bible studies and learning these truths for the first time himself. And he only had that much knowledge to share, but still people came to Christ through him, friends. Baptisms happened and that was an immense opportunity that he didn't pass up. And we don't have to pass that up either. And that's the thing. If we feel like we're at a low point, we feel like our spiritual lives are dry or a desert experience is looming over us, let's remember that soul winning is where it's at. That will not only give us great experiences of sharing, but also empower and refresh our spiritual lives as well. And the excitement that we see in other people's eyes as they hear these truths for the first time will excite us. And the Holy Spirit working powerfully through us will revitalize and refresh our spiritual lives like nothing else can. So I leave you with that thought. And thank you for listening. God bless.